enjoy the show. It says here, he who knows nothing, loves nothing. And he who can do nothing, understands nothing. And he who understands nothing, is friends. But he who understands also loves, notices and sees. The more knowledge is inherent in a thing, the greater the love. Anyone who imagines that all fruit ripen at the same time as strawberries knows nothing about fruit. How can this be so difficult? Love is an activity, not a passive affect. It is a standing in, not a voting for. In the most general way, an extra character of love can be described that love is primarily giving, not receiving. Ah, you see, I agree with that book of yours. Love is receiving, not giving. That makes sense to me. Nah, I come off with anything. How do you agree with Eric Trump? You're just using his book as an escape book for your manager. No, love. Let me argue with you and engage you intellectually. Do you allow me? Mm, go on. I'm you see, you. in the sphere of material things, giving means being rich. Wise men say, not he who has much is rich, but he who gives much is rich. The businessman who is anxiously worried about losing something else, is psychologically speaking, poor, impoverished man, regardless of how many millions he has. Oh, I get your point. Yes, I do get your point, my love. What you mean is I'm poor and impoverished just because I want us to get married? No, baby, that's, that's not what I mean. What I mean is this. One who is deprived of all that goes beyond various necessities for subsistence and therefore is incapable of enjoying the act of giving material things. But daily experience shows that what we consider as minimal necessities depends as much on us on our character as much as it depends on our collective possessions. I mean, we all know that the poor are more willing to give than the rich. But poverty, at a certain point, deprives them of enjoying the act of giving. And that's all degrading. Not only because of the direct suffering it causes, but because it also deprives the poor of the joy of giving. Ah, very intellectual indeed. But you see, intellectually speaking, this analysis that you are giving me does not make sense at all. Because all that you are saying to me is that I must agree to a traditional marriage conspiracy that suggests that Munna wa Adinsa, Munna ki silebo lana Adinsa, Munna ki mokoku wana. That we can sleep with whoever you want. Hey baby, that's not what I mean. The most, the most important sphere of giving, it's not that of material things, but of specific human reality. There you go with your big intellectual English again. You mean really? Okay, all right, tell me. Why does one partner give to the other? Love, what else? Yes, but what is that love as opposed to giving material things? Well, you tell me. You give yourself, your, your inner self, you know, the most important of self. You give your life. Giving your life? Yeah. Giving your life? Yes. Giving your life to a man who doesn't want to commit, what love is that? That is not love. You see exactly my point. Unless, unless you see, if that commitment doesn't mean that you necessarily sacrifice yourself to the other, but that you give him or her that which is alive in you. You know, your joy, your sadness, your, your understanding, your knowledge, your humor. You know, you give all expressions and manifestations of that which is alive in humanity. And by so doing, you enhance a sense of aliveness in others by enhancing a sense of aliveness in yourself. I mean, whoever is capable of giving of him or herself is rich. He or she experiences self as one who can confer one to the other. When the lightning of love has shot into thy heart, 
Know that there is love in that very heart. When love of God waxes in thy heart, beyond any doubt, God has love for you. No sound of clapping come from one hand without the other hand. Divine wisdom is destiny and decree. Heaven is a man and earth a woman. Earth fosters what heaven lets fall. Day and night are enemies outwardly. Yet they save only one purpose. Each in love with the other for their mutual work. Without night, they would have nothing to spend. Mm, so you see, to love someone, it's not just a feeling. No, baby, no. It's a judgment. It's a promise. It's a decision. You know, if love was just a feeling, there would be no basis for us, you know, to live together until eternity. I mean, feelings come and go. How can I judge that we will live together forever if my head does not include judgment? You are so correct, Nikki. Love is supposed to be a decision, a promise, a judgment. You are so correct. Thank you. But how do you give a promise? What guarantees do you put on the table for another to commit? No sound of a clapping hand come from one hand without the other hand. In the same breath, my love. How the fuck do I know you are committed? Who are waiting? Who are contract? Two people remain committed to each other. If the sound of a clapping hand come from one hand, on oh, the other hand, that will be a contract between two hands. Mm, I feel it. Uh -huh. That will go that way. All you think is that I think love is not important. They think I am stopping point. I watch endless numbers of movies about happy and unhappy love stories. I listen to a hundred of crazy songs about love. Yet you think I'm not learning anything that needs to be learned about love. No, baby. That's not how I think about you. I mean, I can see that, you know. I can see you are thirsty for love, that you are learning something. But I need you to develop a positive attitude. You know, this peculiar attitude is based on premises which either singly or combined tend to uphold it. You know, I suddenly developed diarrhea yeah. when you start with your big English to explain something simple as why should we get married? And then the attitude becomes peculiar and we have premises. Maybe, maybe. What I'm trying to explain here is that your primary problem is that of how to be loved rather than loving. I mean, you're not showing capacity to love you. Showing capacity to love to a man who might hit me on the side of the bed to screw my cousin with the left money. You see? Say what? You see the problem. What is the problem, Nikki? The Nikki? problem here, my love, is how to be loved rather than loving. And in pursuit of this problem, you are not choosing the wrong pets, you know, like prestige, power, yeah. and all that. What did you expect? Yeah. How do you expect us to live and survive if you are not successful in religion? Even though I'm not condoning these kinky games of yours, which for God's sake I do not know what kind of business it is, but I know you are involved in it because you want to be successful in religion. Is that not so? Yeah, true that. True that, love. But see, that is not love. That is just material things which we are all made to believe that we will not succeed in life if we are not successful and rich. But Nathan, if you can so simply fall that and believe in this way, why can't you do the same for my kids then? You know, baby, I don't have a problem between that. No, no. It's just that, you know, I don't, I don't think you need to be really attractive for this. Oh, so now I'm making myself attractive. Okay. And I now become your mom. I do a baby. Who are they like throwing things out of into a proportion here? You're now cultivating this life and death that to be loved you must be married. When in actual fact, people in our culture mean by being married, they just mean, you know, being contracted to a set of rules and transactions. But Nathan, you and I know that. That the whole culture is based on the appetite of buying on a favorable yeah, and that includes transactions and contracts and arguments. Hey, what a man's happiness consists of the thrill of looking at the shop windows and he buying all that he can afford to buy, either for cash or on installment. That happens to people in a similar way. For a man, an attractive girl, and for a woman, an attractive man. These are the prices that they are after, eh? which usually means a nice package of qualities which are 
Look, I, I hear you, man. I know that you just get to know. I mean, I didn't mean that you are a whore when I said it. I mean, you are not saying it. Nathan! No, I'm not bad. Nathan! Nathan, I don't like that whole much. This, much. This, this is the initial confusion between the state of falling in love and the permanent state of being in love. You know, baby, when two people who are strangers, as all of us are, suddenly let the wall between them break, you know, and feel this closeness, you know, this moment. This is the most exhilarating feeling, you know, the most exciting experience in life. But Nathan, isn't this this moment that makes two people who feel the same about each other to commit to marriage? Yeah, yeah, it does. But you know, whichever way you call it, this love or moment, it's by its very nature, not lasting. Because the two people, you know, be, be develop acquaintance and then suddenly their antagonism. They are boredom, they are, they are, they are, the regrets kills everything of the initial excitement. And yet they don't see this in the beginning. In fact, they take the intensity of their infatuation, you know, being crazy about each other, as the intensity of their, their love. Why it may only be just a preceding degree towards their loneliness, baby. So, you're suggesting that I'm only infatuated and not necessarily in love with you. No, 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 that's not what I mean, baby. But you know, this, this attitude, this attitude that nothing is more important than to be loved, has become a prevalent idea, despite the overwhelming evidence on the contrary. Like look, baby, look, look. Yeah. The first step to take is to become aware that love is an art. And yeah, just as living is an art, if I want to learn the art of medicine, baby, I must first, you know, acquire a lot of knowledge about human body and various diseases. Hey. And after all that, you see, after all that, I'm no means, but I mean, competent in the art of medicine. But Nathan, love does not consist of gazing at each other, but in looking together in the same direction. It's true, baby. It's true. But when lovers, you know, gazing each other like friends, they can actually look ahead, you know, together in the same direction. I mean, that is exactly what we go through on our art of life. Yes, yes. And the other important thing is that this art of life, you know, it can conveniently be, be divided into two parts. Two? Yeah. The first, the master of the theory. And secondly, the master of the practice. You see, after I have acknowledged all the theoretical knowledge and this practical knowledge, then all my intuition will be blended into one. The essence of any master of art. Mm, and I believe that we have spent years in a great practice of our art of living with each other. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've done all that. We've done all that. But you know, aside, aside from the practice and the theory, there's a third factor. Third factor? Yeah. I, I, I give up. A baby. Yeah. How can you give up when you are learning? Listen, Adelaide. Actually, this first of art must be an ultimate matter of concern. But I'm concerned, am I not? I said I'm thirsty. Yes, but there must be nothing else more important in the world than learning this art. And this goes for music, for carpentry, for theatre, and, and for love. And maybe, maybe here lies the answer to the question why people in our culture try so rarely to learn this art. I mean, despite our obvious failures, despite their deep seated craving and thirst for love, everything else is more important than to learn this art. Money, prestige, power. Everything is focused on achieving all this, and none focused on learning the art of loving. But it's not just that I make a choice. I have the right to know where my life is heading. I have a fucking say in where my relationship is heading. By accepting a proper question or putting a ring on it, man, I give him all those powers in the world which sends a clear message that what we women want does not matter, but it does matter. Alright. Look at the animals. They give off springs, but they don't have marriage. Yes, we are not animals, we are humans. 
but at least animals have got a clean slate of problems. Maybe they don't have the marriage like us, but what they have doesn't have attachment in property and all that. But Nathan, we are free to select the kind of person that we love. We might have chosen somebody else. We are not forced into this by social convention or matchmaking ends or the domestic imperatives. Yeah, but in reality, those choices are also, you know, are, 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 are strongly deep predisposes who we should fall in love with. And who is that? No, our childhood. Our childhood? What does childhood have to do with whom we look for in love when we are old men? Our psychological history strongly predisposes who we should feel attracted to. I'm that's, you that. that's to me is a bullshit excuse. My mother was depressive, emotional, nagging, and demeaning. Oh, uh -huh. that makes you sure that you are not nagging and emotional. Oh, that is what you see. No, I'm just making an example. And you can really choose emotionally again. Alright, let's say, what makes you sure that you are not demeaning anymore? No, uh, because I'm not ever, I never meant to be. Uh, and why do you become emotional when I mention emotional and negative? Uh, because emotional is an adjective describing a certain behavior in which negative is a common factor associated with women. You know what, baby? I think you are choosing the particular emotion out of all banks of emotions, because maybe that's how you feel. Nathan, I know that there are banks and banks of emotions. And yes, one can always make a distinction between emotional episodes and emotional dispositions. Mm -hmm. hey. And those emotional dispositions can be comparable to character traits. Yes. You know where one can be said to be experiencing certain emotions like nagging? Nathan. Any irritable person is generally disposed to feel irritation more easily than others. Mm. And what makes you irritable now? Mm. Psychology. <laughs> psychology? Nathan. You haven't got that there. This is the psychology that tells you why certain girls do certain things. Oh. Hey. And is this the psychology that can tell you what kind of a guy would go for a certain kind of a girl that you wouldn't think she would? What do you mean? I mean, take the, the preacher's daughter, for example. There are certain girls like that that you can almost bet that they wouldn't go for certain kind of, of guys. Mm -hmm. No matter how terrible the fellow may seem, you cannot decide that even a preacher's daughter do not go up with it. Take us for an example. Mm -hmm. Baby, yeah. next week I'm going to get a race. Our production is open and sitting mm here. -hmm. So, I've been wondering, what do you think? Maybe we could finally get married. Yeah, I mean, we could have been married sooner or later. Yeah, that's 
share this with you before you hear it anywhere else. You see, Nathan, there are stages in relationships and marriage. They're honey. Where you have sex three to six times a day. I love it, man. The vacation. Where you have a ten to three four times a year. Mm -hmm. And the oral sex. Mm -hmm. Where you spend to the opposite side of the table from the partner. And you're fucking <laughs> Don't tell me that you are playing, you are playing with the possibility. 
to Why not? Isn't there a lot of romance? Do you not know the story? Yeah, I used to know it until I chose to forget it. Well, I will relate it to you. That's what I'm going to say. Human beings originally had two heads, four arms, and four legs. We were shaped like a rock ball and trampled against the face of the earth. They couldn't speak. The gods grew alarmed at this display of power. So Zeus had to plan and would cut humans into half, leaving each with just one head, two arms, and two legs. And these mutilated halflings were a perfect example. And this is why they devoted a considerable amount of their own limited energy searching for their lost love. They desire. Yeah. And the desire to find the missing half was the birth of divorces and romantic disasters. Yes, to some. But individuals sustain the search that in an individual believe that the right person, the one, was up mm. And you think I'm the one? Nathan, what kind of question is that? What is that supposed to mean? Well, the love of promise. The lovers felt was a lot less, more than wholeness. So Zeus takes pity at the half wings and rolls their genitals around so that when they need, they can find that little release of passion. Sex becomes a temporary state of unity, though it does to some degree. So when it is this, the God of craftsmen passes by and promises the couple who wish. These two tragic figures speak in one voice. Ah, when does together they cry? When does it do one? And it's tears of pleasures. The two become one. Yeah, and this new situation shows how love gets stuck. Glued together, gazing deep into only each other's eyes, the lovers lose touch with the rest of the world. Not caring for anything else. Death. And the dream of spending the last single breath together? Ah, uh, romance in the climax of Romeo and Juliet. You were listening to me because the intervention of a psychologist. Yeah, yeah, and I think he made the right choice with that book. You see, Eric Forth is a psychologist and the author of The Art of Loving. And he says that for love to survive the future, Lovers must move from a state of being in love to a state of staying in love. Couples must move beside what is happening in their true wholesome one for them to succeed. I think it is clear that your problems about you stems from love and affection. It is obviously true. Mm -hmm. huh? My problem is when two loving hearts suddenly develops one of them suddenly develops this infatuation and becomes possessive and obsessed with this horrible thing called marriage. That's why I don't believe in this marriage thing. I mean, I'm sure you believe me when I tell you that if a woman falls in love with a man and you know as culture, I mean, she can't tell the man or maybe the man is not interested in her and then another man comes and takes that woman for a wife you are agree with me when I tell you that that man is not just number one in the woman's heart. Hey, Nathan, I told you that it was not just that I make a choice. I have the right to know when my relationship is ending. By accepting a proper question or put a ring on it mentally, men are given all the powers in the world to send the clear message that what we women want does not matter. But it does matter. How will you feel when, when, when you happen to know that a woman of your heart has got choice number one somewhere in Botswana, or maybe two or even eleven, and all those men were engaged. That's why she couldn't be married to them, and that's how you got your chance. How am I supposed to live knowing that I might not be chance number one in that woman? <laughs> huh? So, for the fucking 40 years, you have been hovering and nurturing this fear that you got a chance after another man. Eh? Mm -hmm. Do you think that I was supposed to fall from it right into your hands? No, no, no. I think we must avoid confrontation here. Yeah. We are just talking, you know, trying to find a solution. But I, you yeah. have already made this irrelevant scenario about me, but who tells me that you are talking about me? Alright, let's change the direct confrontation. Let's then agree that 
I am not talking about which one, but we are referring to the song. I am so over watching women's feelings get dismissed just because we live in a culture that glorifies everything. Listen, I eat humans and you are not flowers. And I criticize pretty much everything that all girls and women say in the water groups. And all those things do not make me more of a woman or less of a person. They do not mean I'm incapable of knowing what I want in my life. And neither does my demand to get married. Yeah, baby. And this, this. Brings me into a theory that you know you're just pushing me. I feel like a heel in this world. <laughs> if you want us to get married, just say it, but you know you are pushing me. <laughs> so now she just say it. Eh? I should just tell you when I want to get married. As if you don't want to get married too. Eh? Okay. Okay. Alright, can we get married? Ah, no, 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 we can't. We can't. <laughs> We can. Why not? Why can't you marry me? Because, because... Because, because, because what kind of answer is that? Because I, I have to attend the church meeting. Ah! I have to keep it daily. At 2 o'clock in the morning? That is the greatest fucking rule that you have ever told me. Doctor, I promise you. Yes, you promised me this, you promised me that, you promised me everything at the time. You're going to be giving me a kiss and giving me that, and you're off to your kitty games like that. When I think of the time you're going to buy, and I think of the way I try, I actually honestly try. So true, so new. So what can you do me? I love you, baby. You are gambling here. You are gambling that you gamble on anything all except me. And I'm tired of it and sick and tired of this thing. When I think of the time gone by, and I think of the way I try, I just want to be tired. Alright, okay. Call a lawyer and sue me. Shoot bullets through me. What can you do? I love you. You are gambling here, you are gambling that you have been gambling. Children, wife, themselves. 
Huh? You know, you make it sound as if I'm desperate for something. No, but besides, besides, maybe, besides, I don't know. I mean, the acceptable window for a couple that is ready to marry is very small. I mean, if she's ready too soon, she's... That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm desperate. I'm ah, there and she's not going to for my desperation. Mommy, it has been, excuse my French, fucking 14 years old. Yeah, we'll get married soon. This bullshit has been fed for too long and it has finally and really, really got to me. Yeah, but the Basutu nation are the biggest nation that had that shit fed to them so hard. They had it fed to them so hard that they even had their word for it. Nah, in the end. You know what it is? I've come to realize that how about you me? Hmm? All you want is to eat all the all the oh god! My head will be okay. How about it? You know, honey, this is where it ends. You see, Google needs to be maintained. Yes, but not psychologically. And this is why you are stuck in one bank of emotion, and this bank is emotional regulation. Where emotion responses are poorly moderated and do not lie within the accepted range of emotional responses. Hey. Oh. And that's why you are, you are always making an aggressive mm. mm. Well, it's possible that we can rewire our template of emotions, né? It's not easy, but I don't think it's impossible. I mean, I cannot have a life when my wife feels insecure. And it's aggressive, it's passively aggressive. Like she's on me occasionally because of her insecurities. I did not realize this. But I consider this to be normal and so much. Maybe, maybe while it's good for me to be blaming you, I'm not aware that it's equally my fault to be drawing mm. you up. Mm. I don't stand mm. you up. <laughs> Aging what you don't know. Because I'm saying maybe it can be my fault that I'm also drawn into those characteristics subconsciously. <laughs> Approach and communication. I think they are core to any relationship. Don't do you think so? I like that. Anyway, I did it, my love. Huh? <laughs> Will you marry me? <laughs> Why did you take me that long? This <laughs> will marry you. Well, What about your mother and the six children? Mm -hmm. I will write to mom and tell her we are touring with the most expensive. Rings! Rings! We need rings! It's already organized! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Mm -hmm. <laughs> my mom! Are you ready to be your wife? Ah.